Today we're going to talk about how to add drop shadows to text or images that will look like this or like this. So depending what kind of style you're into, this video is going to cover it. So to start things off, let's first create a text layer. So grabbing my text tool by pressing T, I'll just click on my image and I'll call this to shadow. Pressing the check mark, grabbing my move tool and just repositioning this to the center. Now let's go add a drop shadow. The first option for drop shadows is using layer styles, which is like this easy way to add a bunch of cool effects to individual layers. To access your layer styles, just double click on your layer of choice. So in this case, my shadow layer. Now this little panel comes up called layer styles and on the left hand side, we have all of these different options showing us different styles we can add to our text. And one of them is drop shadow. So if I click on drop shadow, that'll add a check mark to it. And then notice how I now have a shadow behind my text. Now to make this customized to how you want it to look, you can use all of these settings right here to adjust the angle, the color, the blending options, and all that good stuff of your drop shadow. Now the first thing is the color, which you can change by clicking on this color swatch right here, and then choosing your color of choice. So let's say I wanna add like this pinkish color like that, click okay. Now the color of my drop shadow will be that. I can also change the opacity using the opacity slider as it says, but most importantly, you can change the angle of your drop shadow by using this little option here. Now, it, you might be a little confused at first because say I put it over here, put the little line over here, the drop shadow goes to the other side of my text. That's because you have to just think about where the light source is coming from. This line is representing the light source. So if I was shining a light this direction, the shadow would go out that direction. Same with if I moved this light coming from the top, the shadow would obviously be at the bottom because if you shined a light from the top down onto something, a shadow would be below it. So that's how this angle option works. And you can move it around however you'd like. Now these next three sliders customize how your shadow appears behind your text in both blur and intensity, as well as distance from the text. So the distance is kind of self-explanatory. It just changes how far away your drop shadow sits from your text. So the higher your distance, the more disconnected your drop shadow becomes. Now, as for the spread and the size, you kind of have to use them together to understand what they do. So let me first increase the size, which is obviously going to make my drop shadow seem larger. It's going to spill out into a larger area. Now, what the spread does is essentially is like brush feather. So the higher your spread, the harder your shadow will appear. So the edges will become harder. But then if you bring down your spread, the edges are going to be very soft and have a nice feathered edge as you see like so, it gives it a more subtle appearance. So with a higher spread, just think it becomes a harder shadow. So by using that along with the size, you can really control how sharp your shadow is going to be on your text. So drop shadows with the layer styles are super easy as you can see. And once you click OK and you exit layer styles, you'll see this little option below your text or your image layer. And this is just telling you that, hey, an effect has been added onto your layer with layer styles. And if you want to access it again, just double click on your adjustment. So if I double click on drop shadow, the drop shadow options will come up so I can edit that once again. So the layer styles is a better option if you want to have a shadow that is kind of closer to your text and doesn't have that 3D pop out look like we're about to do with our long shadow example. So I'm going to clear this layer style here, we're going to clear layer style, and now we're back to square one. This time, let's create a pop out drop shadow. Now, the first thing you need to do is hit that like button down below because otherwise none of these next steps are going to work for you, just kidding. But the real first thing you have to do is duplicate your text layer. So pressing command or control J with your layer of choice that you wanna add a shadow to, now I have a drop shadow copy. Next, what we're going to do is rotate it to the amount that we want our shadow to basically come out of our text. So if you want a really aggressive, steep shadow, you'd wanna increase the degrees. But if you want something more subtle, you'll keep it at a smaller amount. So pressing Command or Control T to access the Transform tool, up here in the upper settings bar, you have this little angle option. And I'm gonna type in, let's say 60 degrees for now. And that will angle that new piece of text for me. Next, I'm going to just change the color of this text so things are easier to align after. So grabbing my text tool by pressing T, I can just click and highlight all of my text and then choose a new color. I'll choose white for now. Pressing the check mark to commit to that. Now let's duplicate this text 100 times. Now rather than just going crazy duplicating with Command or Control J, you can hold Alt or Option plus Command or Control and the up arrow on your keyboard with your duplicate shadow layer selected. So now holding Alt or Option, Command and Control and up arrow, it's going to create a whole bunch of copies for me 
just by holding down that keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna go up to about 100-ish, but if you want a longer shadow, you can just keep on going if you'd like. So I just let go. It might take a bit to just process everything because it usually goes ahead of where you are unless you have some kind of awesome supercomputer that I don't have. But now we have a ton of layers. We have 130 something layers and we need to restore some order back to this layers panel. So scrolling all the way back down to our bottom most shadow layers, we're going to hold shift and then click on our recently duplicated shadow layer, the one that was at an angle. Now that highlights all of our duplicated text layers and we can merge them by pressing command or control and E. And that's gonna take all those layers and merge it into one. So our layers panel will not be so overwhelmed with layers. If you have a ton of layers, this step might take a little bit for your computer to process, but once it's done, it will be on its own layer like you see here. Now we need to rotate this back to its original position to line up with our text. So pressing command or control T once again, we're going to go to that rotation option in the upper settings bar and this time we're going to add the negative value of whatever your first value was. So since I put in a 60 degree rotation for the first value, I'm going to use a negative 60 rotation for resetting my text back to its initial position. Pressing the check mark to commit to that. I'm going to drag this layer below my shadow text layer and now I'll just grab my move tool by pressing V and then reposition this to line it up with the text like so. And now just like that, we've added that nice long drop shadow to our text. Now, if you wanted to extend this even further, you can just click on your long shadow, duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J, and then grabbing your move tool and just really extending it like that, bumping it into position with your arrow keys if you would like. And then now you can continue to do that as far as you want all the way off your image if that's what you're into. Now, if you wanna go and change the color of your drop shadow. You can't really just select the text because it's no longer a text layer. So in this case, I've extended my shadow and I wanna change the color of both of these layers. So to make life easy, I'm gonna shift click between both layers, press Command or Control E to merge those into one. And now we're gonna use our layer styles once again and use something called color overlay. So double clicking on that long drop shadow there, then going to color overlay. Now I can click on this little color swatch and I can pick any color I want and that will apply that color to your layer and quickly change the color of your long drop shadow. Clicking OK, just like that, super easy to do. And if you wanna edit it just like with our previous drop shadow in the layer styles, you can just double click on color overlay. It'll open up those settings again for you and you can make any changes that you need. Now in this example, I obviously use text which has a solid color from the start, but what if you're using an image that has a bunch of colors already? How do you make the drop shadow have a solid color. I've created a little bit of an inversion here. I have our old example on a new example. And basically we're gonna repeat the same process. So Command or Control J to duplicate our image layer. And then we're gonna rotate it once again. So pressing Command or Control T and then rotating it to your desired amount. This time we'll do minus 60 degrees. Clicking the check mark to commit to that. Now, before you go and extend your image, what you can do is just double click on the image and then go to color overlay and then pick the drop shadow color you want. For now, I'll do black, clicking OK. Now your image will be covered with your color overlay. And to make your computer load a little bit faster, it's worthwhile to rasterize this so you don't have this color overlay option below. So right clicking on your image and going to rasterize layer style, that will just merge your color overlay onto your image. Now from there, you can repeat the process duplicating your image as many times as you want to extend your drop shadow, rotating it back to its initial position, and then aligning it with your image. So then when you're done, it will look something like this. And once again, you can change the color of this drop shadow by using color overlay within the layer styles. Now, if this video helped you to learn how to create drop shadows, make sure to hit that like button down below, and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then. See you then.